How many table tennis players do you know who have a great forehand drive, great forehand loop, really good serves, really good game, but you play them down the backhand and they fall apart? And when you speak to them about it, they say, I don't know, I was never really coached or I've never really got to grips with the backhand, so I just run around and play everything forehand. Now, maybe that's a friend of yours, maybe that's you. Um, we're going to try and cover all of the basics and all of the fundamentals right from the beginning of the backhand drive, which will set you up for having a really good backhand loop, which will be good against topspin, block, and against heavy backspin. Don't believe me? Stay tuned and we'll get into it. So you'll notice in this clip that uh, there's a down and up motion. Now, as the ball is coming from your opponent, you're, you should be just dropping ever so slightly. And as the ball hits the table, that is when you should be going up with the legs. So you'll notice that there's a constant down and up motion as you play the backhand drive. Now, I'm just including a couple of still images so you can get an appreciation of where you put your feet for how you're playing you know which line so corner to corner is the first image down the line this image So, when we're talking about the backhand drive or backhand in general, where's our starting position? Now, it's important um, that you get your setup correct. So, in the previous uh, sections, we saw where you should put your feet. So, I'm playing corner to corner here, as illustrated by this line here. Now, what I need you to understand is that um, when playing backhand, many coaches will say to play the racket from the belly button which is which is here so if we play here you can perhaps see that there is a bit of a gap here now i don't particularly like this setup because what will often happen is that the racket will come through and over um, instead of going up and, and through towards your head so what i tend to try and coach um, is where the, the line here should come into your hip area here. So where the pocket of my jeans is, and I really shouldn't be wearing jeans for these videos, but um, anyway. Um, so the, the sort of inside part of your, your hip here is where the, the racket should effectively start. Now you can see now there's no hole here, you can't see. So here we can see straight through and here we can't. So it's a very compact shot now, now as we have that. So there's, there should be no uh, driving off the side. So what we're looking for is, and obviously the drive is a short movement anyway, but it's important to start with good foundations, good principles to begin with. So what we're looking to do is, so the line here, you're looking to get this racket from over your hip here and by the time you make contact with the ball it is on that line you can see my my hand is over that line so if I now use a bat which will alter things slightly here and here my racket is over that line so I always suggest just starting it slightly to the left if you're a righty uh, if you're left the opposite um, but yeah, just start it slightly over from the line of play. So if the ball is coming down this line, you want the racket just slightly over so that there's, there's, no, there's no hole, there's no gap here and everything by the time you make contact is here. So that is a good starting position and we'll play the, the racket forwards. Again, if we're going to go down the other line, I'll show a quick video of where your hip should be there as well. 
And so once again, what we're looking for is we want to make contact with the 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 um, ball over the line. So if we set ourselves up so our hip is just about here, the racket should come from here. And by the time we're making contact with the, the ball, the racket is over that line. So it's nice and steady from there. So there should be none of, you know, the difficulty is is people will always try and bring the racket over, which will impart side spin and the ball will want to travel out. So always try to move your hip into position where the line is. So uh, again, if, we, if we're going to move from say here to here, we'll, I'll try and get my hip in line with this to be able to play that ball straight. Again, move across and here, there we go. Okay. So as the backhand drive is uh, quite a short stroke, the finish position is about chin height, just there. I've slowed this video down so you can see a few shots where you can see the starting position and the finishing position. So where's the contact point for the backhand drive? Well, you're looking for consistency. So what we're looking for is a, a good contact point. And round about here is great. So middle is fine, here's good, and equally down here is also good. But for consistency, if we kind of aim for roughly about there, it's perfectly fine. So, use of the legs in backhand. Now, on the, on the face, uh, face value, um, you might consider that backhand doesn't really require much leg movement, um, unlike, say, the forehand drive, forehand loop. Now, I will tell you that in order to play uh, backhand successfully from like a drive perspective or, you know, a top spin or an actual loop, the actual effort from the legs, in my opinion, is by far the greatest. Um, now, my, my table tennis coach from when I was 17, um, and I started quite late, he taught me uh, a, a few things which are um, invaluable to me now as, I, as a player. And one of the things that he taught me, obviously, um, you need you need a, a good stance, which we've covered in 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 other videos. But as this ball is coming towards you from your opponent, as it's coming, you should be coming. You should be lowering your body. Then, as the ball hits the table, you stop. You should be in your fully down position at this point. Now, as that ball then it begins to rise, that is when you, you stand up and you make contact with the ball. So again, as it's coming, you get down, as it hits, you should stop and then start your motion upwards and there's your contact point. So if we're gonna be using the legs for the shot, so we, we need to imagine, because there's no one here with me, it's half past 12 in the evening, so as the ball's coming, it's going to hit the table. So I'm going to try and replicate this by touching the table and you'll see how my movement is. So touches, play, touches, play, touches, play. And you really do need to actively do this in order to have your timing become good and your control, you're getting low to the ball, your head's close to the ball and you're playing. Okay. So, Hopefully you've all stuck around for the pro tips. 
Um, and if we do cover uh, something which we've covered earlier in this video, uh, I believe that that's a good thing because repetition, um, you know, is a good way of A, getting it into your uh, physical game and also into your mental game so that when it really matters, uh, you can rely on it both physically and mentally. You don't have to think it's there. So the first tip that we gave earlier, which was uh, where the, the racket actually starts from. So again, if it starts from the belly button, then we have this rather large gap and hole here. So you can see straight through to my blinds here. Now doing that, the elbow becomes uh, a bit of a passenger. It's not active. So what can happen is that the racket can come off. So the, the elbow acts as a pivot point here and the elbow comes offline and ends up over here. Now what can happen there is that when you make contact with the ball, you're effectively coming around the side of the ball. So if you're playing someone who's doing this, you're expect, you might expect the ball down the line, use this as an example, and it will drift off. So the, the typical thing is when you're playing corner to corner, people will put the ball here. So if I'm stood all the way over here and someone is pivoting like this, the ball will tend to come here, which will then throw your shot off as well. So try to have, if you're ever unsure wherever your bat starts, so obviously every body is different, uh, go look physically in a mirror and see where that hole disappears. So the, the arm is in front of the body. So it's hard to show, but so in here, um, we've got that there. So you can see that it's in front of the body. Okay. So that's pro tip number one. Pro tip number two is, um, how do we how do we get the same timing of the ball? We see the professionals, and it's basically you know, it's the same timing every every single time. Now we we talked about the use of the legs, and that allows us to basically get lower to the bounce. So we're hunting that bounce, which is key. So, but my, my table tennis coach, uh, when I was 17, uh, tried to explain it in terms of uh, musicality. So like a, a metronome. So obviously they keep time very, very well. Now, if wherever that bounce is, so if it's here, I want to try and have the same distance between that bounce and where my bat is. So obviously, if that is further in, I need to bring the bat forwards. So I need to be here rather than back here. And then again, if it's deep, I need to be here. So you can try and think of it, uh, my, I say Dennis, my coach, used to use the words, I, and I really don't know where in his mind these came from, but it's stuck with me for over 20 years. And those words were ca and cow. So um, very strange words. They will stay with you for life. And I do apologize if you, you know, 20 years from now, you're thinking, why am I mentioning cacao? But essentially you're looking for just like a metronome. So we don't want Okay, so try and get your timing right and base it off like a musical metronome or cacao or some other type of um, way that you can remember it. But that is very much key to being able to control that ball consistently and be able to, you know, force your opponents to make a mistake. And finally, tip number three. So when we get into sort of very advanced backhands, which we will do, um, what I don't want to, to, to see at any point, including the backhand drive, is where the, um, the elbow is, even though the, the racket is starting from the correct place, 
the the elbow here is behind the wrist so if we if i show that so the wrist is in front of the elbow so let me show that there's my elbow and the wrist is here in front of me what we want for the backhand drive is to make sure that that's that's level so they're in, they're in line so uh, it's very hard to visualize this on the camera but uh, let's do it let's actually do it this way so here my body is in line with my with my arm here and when we get to advanced backhands we will be looking to uh, bring that elbow in front of the wrist but we'll get to that but for the drive level is fine so here to there okay just like that So thanks for watching this uh, video on the backhand drive. Uh, hopefully you'll uh, enjoy enjoy watching it as much as I've enjoyed making it. There's a great deal of detail in there. I realise it's a, a little bit of a longer video than I um, originally thought it would be. However, you know I don't do things by halves. I uh, you know I want people to have good shots. Um, so just a final thank you to all of our new subscribers and existing subscribers and hopefully you all do enjoy this video um, and apparently the YouTube algorithm uh, tells me that there are a number of viewers who haven't as yet considered uh, subscribing. Um, now hopefully um, if you found any part of this video helpful whether it be a small amount or, or very helpful indeed consider giving me a, a like and a subscribe. It really does help the channel. And uh, the more subscribers I get, the more content I will be able to make in future, which is where I want to go with this. So um, yeah, see you next time. Bye now.